Namaste dear students. We are all aware of the internal structure of the human eye, the defects of vision which are myopia, hypermetropia and presbyopia. We can find out the angle of deviation for an angle of incidence in a glass prism and of course we can read a reason out that red color gets least deviated and violet color gets deviated the most. The rainbow is formed when each droplet acts like a small prism. Today let's understand the science behind the colorful world. By the end of the discussion, we'll be able to explain the reason behind the twinkling of stars, color of the sky, color of the sun at the time of sunrise and sunset and many other natural phenomena. So, do you remember the nursery rhyme, twinkle twinkle little star? How I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Why do stars twinkle? Uh, you know, it is actually the flickering or wavering image of the object, which you can see uh, generally uh, just above the bonfire. Now, the air just above uh, the fire becomes hotter than the air further up. The hot air is lighter and of course less dense than the cooler air which is just above it and uh, has a refractive index slightly less than that of the cooler air. Since the physical conditions of air are not stationary, the apparent position of the object as seen through the hot air fluctuates. Now, children twinkling of stars is a similar phenomena but on a much larger scale. The twinkling of a star is due to atmospheric refraction of starlight. Now the starlight on entering the earth's atmosphere bends towards the normal because it enters a denser medium from vacuum. Thereafter the conditions of the atmosphere keeps on changing. Density, temperature variation varies the refractive index at different layers. Now, different layers of atmosphere bends the light differently. Therefore, the light keeps on changing direction at every interface. Remember, our line of sight is straight. So, the star appears slightly higher than the actual position when viewed near the horizon. Since the stars are very distant, they approximate point-sized sources of light. As the path of rays of light coming from the star goes on varying slightly, the apparent position of the star also fluctuates. The amount of starlight entering the eye flickers, so the star sometimes appears bright and some other times it might appear faint, which is why we see the twinkling effect. Do you ever wonder why don't the planets twinkle? You will be surprised to know that planets are much closer to the earth and are thus seen as extended sources. So, if we consider a planet um, as a collection of a large number of point sized sources of light as compared to a star which behaves like a point sized object, the twinkling effect will be nullified. So, after discussing about the stars uh, we see at night, let us talk about our favorite star that is the sun. The sun is visible to us about 2 minutes before the actual sunrise and about 2 minutes after the actual sunset. So, by actual sunrise we mean the actual crossing of the horizon by the sun. Horizon, basically it is the line at which the earth's surface and the sky appear to meet. Uh, also the time difference between actual sunset and apparent sunset is about 2 minutes. Well, uh, this is all about stars and sun, but what about more colors like the blue color of the sky, color of water in deep sea, the reddish appearance of the sun at sunrise and at the sunset. 
To understand that, we have to talk about scattering of light. And you are already aware about the scattering of light by colloidal particles. The path of a beam of light passing through a true solution is not visible, but its path becomes visible through a colloidal solution where the size of the particles is relatively larger. Uh, children, you know the Earth's atmosphere is a mixture of minute particles like smoke, gases, tiny water droplets, suspended particles of dust and molecules of air. Now when a beam of light strikes such fine particles, the path of the beam becomes visible. Now the phenomena of scattering of light by the colloidal particles gives rise to an effect which is known as the Tyndall effect. Now Tyndall effect can also be observed when sunlight passes through a canopy of a dense forest. Um, here tiny water droplets in the mist scatter the light. Remember that the color of uh, scattered light depends upon the size of the scattering particles. Now this is really important. Very fine particles scatter mainly blue light, while particles of larger size scatter light of longer wavelengths like red. Now if the size of the scattering particles is large enough, then the scattered light may even appear white. Uh, this fact can answer our question, why is the color of clear sky blue? So the answer is that the molecules of air and other fine particles in the atmosphere have size smaller than the wavelength of visible light. These are more effective in scattering of light of shorter wavelength that is blue and not red. So when sunlight passes through the uh, atmosphere, the fine particles in the air scatter the blue light which is of shorter wavelength more strongly than the red. So the scattered blue light enters our eyes and hence we see the sky blue in color. So if the earth had no atmosphere, there would not have been any scattering. Then the sky would have looked absolutely dark. Uh, sky appears dark to passengers flying at very high altitudes as scattering is not prominent at such heights. Um, you might have also observed that uh, the danger signals, uh, they are painted red in color. Do you know why? The red is least scattered by fog or smoke. Therefore, it can be seen uh, in um, uh, the same color at a distance. This also brings us uh, to a discussion uh, of the topic that why sun at sunrise and at sunset is reddish orange uh, in color. Let us do an activity to understand this. First of all, allow uh, a beam of light to pass through a transparent glass tank containing clear water. Uh, thereafter, you can dissolve 200 grams of sodium thiosulfate in about 2 liters of clean water which was already taken in the tank. Add about 1 or 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. You are going to observe that these sulfur particles because they precipitate in about 2 to 3 minutes, blue light can be seen on all the three sides of the glass tank. This is due to the scattering of short wavelengths by minute colloidal sulfur particles. This activity demonstrates the scattering of light that helps you to understand the bluish color of the sky and the reddish appearance of the sun at the sunrise or at the sunset. Now light from the sun near the horizon passes through thicker layers of air and travels larger distance in the earth's atmosphere before reaching our eyes. Now most of the blue light which is of a shorter wavelength, it is scattered away by the particles. Therefore the light that reaches our eyes is of longer wavelengths. 
This gives rise to the reddish appearance of the sunlight and shorter wavelengths are scattered away by the particles. But light of the sun overhead would travel relatively shorter distance. So therefore at noon sun appears white as only a little of the blue and violet colors are scattered. I am sure now you know the reason behind the colors in nature. The science behind is scattering which depends on two things. Size of the particles of the medium. Remember small size of the particles scatter blue light, slightly larger would scatter red light. Wavelength of the color of the light that is blue light gets scattered the most and red light gets scattered the least. Also try to find out the answer to the question why are clouds white in color. So till next time keep asking questions and keep practicing.